Man, you come straight out of a cone. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another edition of Straight Out of a Comic Book. I am your host, Will Farrow. Of course, I got the fellows with me today, Young Deuces, C.T. is Fury, and Mr. Clint Coley himself, man. He's in Philadelphia right now, <laughs> retraining the comedic stand-up, getting the new materials ready, man. And so, you know, it, it, speaking of materials, man, I'm glad you gathering some because I, I don't I don't think that's what these writers did and what we talking about today. Hilarious. <laughs> Boy, all right, boy. boy. Um, you know, before we get into this, this is a spoiler uh, alert. So we are talking about secret invasion today. We are jumping into the good, the bad, the what the fuck. Um, yes. So if you haven't seen the full thing, please go check out one of our other episodes. You can check out the uh, latest crossover edition with me and the Geek Set Podcast. We're talking about sequels that we deserve to have from movies to television. Go check that out until you catch up on Secret Invasion. But now that I've told y'all that, we're jumping into it, and we're going to treat this like a dinner, okay? I know we got a okay. lot to say about it, so we're going to treat this like a dinner. We're going to start off with our appetizers. We're going to jump into our main course, go into our dessert, and then we're going to top it off you know, with, with, some, with some, some spirits, as they call it. I love so it. So we're going to start with the appetizer. Let's start off with I want to get y'all opinions on where we start off in Secret Invasion. Okay, so we know um, we can tell that, you know, we're seeing Nick Fury coming back from the Saber Station. So we're somewhere between WandaVision and Miss Marvel. And we're after Endgame. Mm -hmm. So now I want to get y'all opinion on like the tone that y'all saw when we first start off with this uh, with Secret Invasion. How were y'all feeling? Wait, you don't, before you wait. say it, <clears throat> you said this is after Endgame. Is this after the Yeah, this is after the blip. Okay, I'm sorry. I was confused. Go ahead, Clint. I'm sorry. Yeah. So I will say this as somebody who, again, you know, I'm not, a, I wasn't the comic, I, I didn't read the comments. I didn't know what Secret Invasion was really about. I, the only, I, the only thing I knew about scrolls was, you know, of course, from Captain Marvel, right? I'm not going to lie. When it first came on, I will say that I like the tone that it said, right? I'm into espionage. I'm into not knowing who to trust. Who can you, like, literally the opening scene of even just finding out that Everett Ross was a scroll, like, I like the tone that it set. It set the tone where it's like, oh, wow, right? Like, after the end game, you know, and, you know, again, with the time with WandaVision and blah, 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 I do like, and, you know, I know what Marvel does. They, they, they have, of course, their space stuff. They have their, you know, galactic stuff, but they also have their stuff that's happening on Earth. This, to me, was a great beginning of what, a new Earth situation that is going on that can be handled on Earth by Earth heroes. I was definitely a fan of how it started off for sure. Yeah, yeah, just like Clint, like when it, when it comes down to espionage, like to me, confusion is always great, right? So it's like right off the bat, like you said, when you found out that Everett Ross was a scroll, it was like oh shit and then like if you know the story of secret invasion knowing that there was so many heroes and people that would like now we gotta you know watch the history and go back and say oh shit they was the scroll that's why they did this when they set that up immediately and then they already started embedding that there was so many scrolls you're like oh shit i'm in for a ride because now i'm watching every character with a fine tooth like okay is that a person is that a scroll is that a good scroll is that a bad scroll so it's like yeah, the yes. tone for me yeah i i agree with clint that tone Leaning in on the espionage of it was great for me right off the bat. Here's the thing, man. I, I echo what you guys said, and it made me think, wait a minute. If this is after Endgame, is this also after Black Panther 2? Because those were close together. Yeah. And if right. that's the case, Ross was a scroll in that. Yes. Yeah. And that was it blew my mind. So are we on? So tell me where we are because I don't want to jump ahead. If you where don't are we? So, so quick, so think, oh, my bad. Well, my well. I was just going to say, I think they all like some of, these, some of these stories run concurrent. You know what I'm saying? So I think that, you know, it may not be necessarily after this or after that, but we just know that this was for sure after the blip. But I don't know. I, I, I feel like some of these stories can just run, uh, you know, they can run concurrent. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, and so the re and, yeah, and the re so where we're set right now is just this first part. So um talking about like we're busting down the good and the bad of the beginning part of the setting, basically, of where we are. So yeah. Nick Fury is back. We've learned that scrolls 
are here. Scrolls are still here. So again, yeah. like that's one thing we're catching up with too. We saw it from Miss Marvel, but we didn't know that scrolls still are here and existing, not just with maybe a few of them, but there's actually an entire colony called New Scrollos. Yeah. And then as you yeah. said, with all the questions that we're now starting to open up of who's a scroll here, who's a scroll there. I want to that's what I wanted to know from UCT. Like, how do you feel they started to handle this at this beginning part with kind of really serving us a lot of information in the beginning? All right. So one, this is gonna sound really wild, but uh Daenerys from God of Thrones. I mean, yeah, you Game know, of Game Thrones. of Thrones. She yeah. first of all, she's a very she's an incredible actress, she's very beautiful. A one. She looked sickly thin in this show, and I was like, "What's up, man?" What, I, we... I was gonna say I agree. I I, I thought she was young. she looked younger. I don't know if it was the hair or what, but something looked different from when you saw her in Game of Thrones and now. It wasn't younger. It was just like because her face is gonna stay what it is, yeah. but she looked so thin. I don't want us to be going into. I don't even want to speak that, but I just don't want us to be going into another one of those situations where we see an actor and they getting thin, and it's like, hey. But anyway, beyond that, I like the tone of it. It was to me the beginning stages were a step above Falcon and Winter Soldier because Falcon and Winter Soldier felt very TV movie ish, and yeah, yeah. this this had a lot of feels like TV movie moments. But every time Sam Jackson was there, you're like, all right, we back to big box office movie time. But there were several parts of it that felt like this feels like a Sunday afternoon TV show. Yeah. 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 And just to, just to piggyback off what you're saying about her. Also, that could have been a portrayal of them being malnourished because remember yep. they were in um, like, like yeah, they were trying to get yeah yeah so yeah, it's like she there could have been times where she had they're, eaten they're, in a while and stuff yeah they're living in they're living in out the off, they're living in a, a colony like far off in Russia right like bro like and the conditions that if you remember when you go to New Strollos the conditions are shitty. Mm -hmm. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Like they're not they're not living in a great this is not a great town. This is not a great area, right? And also they're eating, you know, first thing they, they're able to grow scroll food and stuff like that. But yeah, no, I, I totally agree with you know, like how CT and what you said of how it how it feels for sure. Yeah, it was like uh the tone of the show. <clears throat> well, let me also start off with I'm never a fan of rustic ancient scenery for a TV show. I prefer everything to be modern. I prefer everything to be city because when you do stuff in like the countryside and you do stuff in Russia, there's all this rustic, older looking agriculture that kind of takes you out of the show if you're trying to be futuristic and dealing with aliens and stuff like that. I think it worked for this show, but it was like it was taking me out because I'm like, all right, this story better be good because aesthetically, <laughs> I'm not falling in love here. And it's like when they're turning into themselves, like when they go back to turning into scrolls, showing their native skin, it was like, all right, this is clearly where the money is going to. Yeah. So this is what they're trying to save everywhere else. But I've always been annoyed at them trying to save money on a big budget idea. Like if yeah. you're going to do that. Okay. Let me, I, I, there's no way to do this without saying this. So when I see the scrolls and we start learning their backstory i'm like okay i see the anger all right i see exactly the beef with fury fury talos never got his justice never no, no talos never got his justice because talos was like yo i've been down with you for 30 years you Man. wouldn't be where you are if it wasn't for me in 30 Man. years and it seems like Yes, he's gone soft because of Earth's ways, asking for permission. They're like, yeah, I think we could sell this idea. But at the same time, this man was y'all's leader, and nobody was showing this man respect. And that kind of pissed me off. So, so to piggyback on that, I think that's what I had a problem in the beginning with all of this. And I think it really did have the, the horrible perception of still keeping a certain supremacy over a group of people and not only did you see that with scrolls you still saw that with nick fury mm -hmm. and then like yeah. especially like in this beginning part to learn that you've been working with scrolls your entire career and you chose to stay within government 
and go up the ranks of this already crooked system when you could have really made change here. Mm -hmm. And then that's what you show this alien race. And so now you have Talos thinking that as well and thinking that that can be the status quo when you know it's a flawed system. So for you to even get mad at what you taught him showed a bit contradictory to me to go like, yo, it did. It, it really took away some of the respect I had for Fury and then made mm. me start to understand a little bit too why Gravik is so mad at you now. Yeah, I was yeah. definitely on Gravik's side. The entire... Well, so he got he got drastic, but I was definitely <laughs> on his side. Yes, yeah. Because yeah. if the end goal is you want a new planet for your people, I don't want to hear the no. We're just gonna take this planet and kill everybody. Like because there are innocent people that right. are here. You got all this anger bottled up inside you. Your real beef is with Fury, which is understandable. But when I looked at that show, and this is like the meme that I sent you guys. Clint, you don't know about this, but I saw I sent a meme to the group where it showed a oh, picture. Whoa, 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 what group is this? Well, we have a we have a group. I knew it was coming. <laughs> yeah, we, we got a group. I didn't know you. I didn't know you didn't know about the group. Well, you know, we'll send you an invite for the group after this. Uh, well, depending on how this episode goes, we'll send you an invite. <laughs> I don't want to get your hopes up. <laughs> if it's you know, if it's not good. He, anyway. He's a living tribunal of the group. Like we just sit there. Like just like he, he well, raised well, the final well, decision. How about, this? how about this? Me, Will, and Deuce. We in the group called the fleet, and you not in it. Hey, here's the thing. You're completely welcome to that group, but I guarantee you, my group is popping. <laughs> it's crazy. I want to be hold on, hey, hey, no, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Don't worry. We there is another group called the uh, uh, spoiler filled group. Oh, hey, as it should be. Yeah, because you know, like we respect when we like, like for uh, anybody. He don't watch group. trailers. I know, I know. Yeah, yeah. Like, and so yeah, if someone yeah. else say for like Deuce is like, I'm not gonna watch nothing with this one. It's like, yo, in this chat, we will honor that. There's another group, however, like, yo, you seen the trailer? Here's the trailer. Yeah. Y'all, y'all. I love, love just Here's the trailer. About, all right, but yeah, if I, let's, talk, let's keep talking. Yeah. So, you. Peep, so when I, I sent the meme of showing Thanos' planet, right, where Thanos left yeah. right before, uh, where did we did the first snap, and it was completely abandoned, and <laughs> Nick Fury <laughs> did not send the scrolls to this well unoccupied planet. They could have lived on for ever and that it was so was real flourishing. that planet was flourishing too think flourishing. about this how it looked when we when we saw Thanos. <laughs> like that, when, that he did the, when he took the reality stone and showed what what titan looked yeah. like yeah it was beautiful. no no not even titan that's no, another place yeah, well, that's two about. options he could have yeah. went to titan with the scrolls i'm talking about the place he went to rest after yeah. he oh, killed one. everybody, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah you're right. Yeah. and what that's you so it's like when you see that i completely understood uh uh, grab it too. Just, just grab, uh, it, grab, guys, grab it. Grab, grab it. it. Yeah, nowhere was a good place. It's like all these places that are <clears throat> available for new people to go. In theory, if you want to keep a couple scrolls behind for you to manipulate the government and for you to infiltrate things as a spy, do that. But there were several places that the scrolls could have went, and I think this is a problem with Marvel taking so long to do these types of stories because now we're getting into a conversation of, well, what's the timeline for this? And if they've always been here, why didn't we see this sooner? Because now you told me they've been here for 30 years. And let me tell you something else y'all didn't think about. We said possibly if they show the X-Men, they got to show the X-Men have been here the whole time. That's going to be a horrible story. And we see that now with the scrolls because yeah. you said they've been here for 30 years and yeah. they've only infiltrated the government. Uh, I doubt that for 30 years, this race of people have been just sitting quietly and only one of them wants revenge. So we should have seen some anger and some fighting well over a decade ago, especially during the, you know. Which so also I maybe qu uh, question Talos's real rank in that, because it's yeah. like, so you knew all of them were taking these places here. So you knew, and like even like you said, you know, we're trying not to jump so far, but the last scene with all the beds and stuff. So you knew that was happening. Well, so I, I so I had a really complete uh, react, different reaction to Fury than y'all uh, because I looked at this as Fury, uh, Fury's pride got in his way so much because even if you look at like even with his wife, she was like saying like you know Fury always he has that. I can handle this. I like it's I got to put this together, right? So though I agree with everything CT was saying, but I don't think that it was a a lack of like 
you know, uh, attention or a lack of writing to what the way I took it was, it was like Fury. He never really, he never really tapped in to really like bring in more of the scrolls to help out because he felt like he was the guy and he had the right team to do it. Right. And mm-hmm. where he got shooking at, and where everything is when the snap happened, because remember when he when he made the Avengers, think about all the things that he did to like to kind of manipulate them a little bit. Like he faked um old, um bro's death and gave him the card. I mean, not faked, it, but like he gave him that card. Was like, yo, Colson did this, and I had to hope that y'all would like. He manipulated a lot for them to come together. So when he was in that car and he started to uh to dust away, I felt like, and they they, they say throughout the whole episode. His faith, and at that point, was broken. You know, so so even when he had like, his relationship with Talos, I don't believe that he intended to ex out Talos and make him feel like he was unwanted. I just felt like he was so tunnel vision and still trying to accomplish this that as a friend, he was just being a bad friend. And so that's why I took it at that. Like, oh shit, it get, I didn't lose respect for Fury, but I was like, bro, yeah, you was really tunnel vision in your head and you forgot your sole purpose was to really help out this race and make the work make the universe better there was no I, reason for heel to die go ahead clip i agree but what i was also going to say too is, is this was the first time i ever saw nick fury really serious vulnerable right like yes. this is the first time in the mcu where i saw you know like they kept making references to the fact that he's weak now right and mm-hmm. like and and you're seeing it right like you're seeing and not even just like him as a, you know him you know physically weak and because you know he's older and samuel jackson in real life is 70 but this is the first time like mentally like i feel like nick fury was getting outsmarted this mm. is the first time i feel like you know like what's her name um, um what's that lady she's the she's one of the best people in the series too um i think her name is sophia what's her name the one that, oh sonia 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 uh, sonia yeah, like she was pointing out, like, look, this ain't the Fury I know, right? Yeah. And what I also that's what I that was another thing that I liked about the show, right? It did show another side of Fury, the Fury that you know, like, hey man, you're not in control anymore. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? As much as you and but but I also like, yeah, that was the main thing. I like the fact that it showed that he was vulnerable and it showed that hey, like you're not as in control as you think you are. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And now and you I- and now you're dealing with the consequences. Of your lies and a lot of a lot of shit that you covered up. Yeah, yeah. And to, and to Deuce's point, you can see it uh, catch in the hands of that and fall. But like mm-hmm. to like how CT is saying, here's where I don't think because of that mistake, this needed to happen. And as mm-hmm. you just said, I want to get your point from CT. Maria Hill died. Yeah. So us getting into the thick of it to where, you know, like Gravik is, is now doing his first step into basically his world domination. That's first bombing uh, the Russian, uh, I believe the Russian embassy and stuff. Mm-hmm. And during that time, um, he transforms into Nick Fury, shoots Maria Hill and Maria Hill dies in Nick's arms. It's just like it was yeah. you. And it's just like. CT, I will be good because you brought it up. I want to get your first opinion on that. Give me the yeah. somewhat good if there is there for you, uh, and the bad of you and the what the fuck for that moment. Uh the bad what the fuck for that moment is she didn't need to die. You could have shot her and kept her on the shelf for the rest of the series, yep. and she comes out of it on the finale. But for you to kill her, it was so stupid and insignificant because the character Maria Hill is so much more than they've ever given her in Marvel Universe. And I'm like, first of all, they whitewashed her. That's number one. Number two, who <laughs> Maria Hill was so insignificant during the last six years, just because you put somebody in a movie alongside somebody doesn't right. mean that they are an important character. And just the way that they killed her, it's like, what? This We didn't need this right now. Also, I understand that they didn't want to call the Avengers in because they didn't want to have uh, they didn't want to steal too many people's DNA. However, you already had a couple of Avengers who were around that you could have used that weren't super powered. That weren't super powered. That you could have used. Like, all right, cool. We got Don Cheadle. Great. Now give us at least one more where you can have them being around. Just because this feels like the more the more you dumb it down, it's a TV movie. So Maria Hill, for her to be killed by. Sam Jackson at the end of the episode and the ramifications of it being the next episode being her funeral and then her mother being like she would have followed you anywhere 
<laughs> get these people that did this to my daughter. It's like, who are you? We never yeah, even yeah, saw yeah, you. Ain't you. never heard you. Ain't never seen that. <laughs> it never. was pointless. Why? Like that was that part of the writing is like, yes, in theory, if a kid dies, you want their parent to be there. Yeah. But it means more if you show that parent before. Perfect example. Um, Captain America Four is coming out. Let's say, for example, the the girl. What's the uh, the Hulk's love interest name? General Ross's daughter, Betty Ross. Betty Ross. Let's say something happened to Betty. Now, no, we have not seen Betty since <clears throat> since the Hulk movie, mm-hmm. and she's making a return now. Yeah. However, we have seen General Ross, even though he's recast, and we have seen uh, Abomination, and we've seen the Hulk in different films. So, if they were to do something to Betty Ross and General Ross shows up, we'll be like, okay, I can buy this because I've seen this guy before. They've never shown anything about Maria Hill's personal life for me to be super invested in her dying. This isn't like Coulson's death. This isn't like Mm -hmm. uh, the other... He's he's Ross, too. This wasn't like Ross's death. This is like somebody that you didn't build up and you expect us to care about. That was definitely a... If she had to die, that was one of those tombstone scenes. Yeah, he's Ooh. there. He sees a tombstone. Sonya comes up, and then that's the conversation. Yeah, because and that's what that should have been. Yeah, because I so because you know remember this this was all first episode right at at that time you, they did the Talos reveal then we get the Maria so I I was salty when like 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 CT said with the next episode because in my mind. I was like, oh, shit, this is about to be on some Game of Thrones shit. Mm-hmm. Anybody can get it, right? So I was like, even though they didn't set up Maria, I was I was uh, hopeful for the potential. But then with the, with the funeral scene, I was like, wait a minute. Like, wait, like I, you really start seeing where they was going with it. And I was like, all right, like, okay, yeah, that didn't have to happen. So it was like I got let down yeah. immediately because it was like y'all didn't – big this up like I thought that y'all was going to do. Also, you set it up like it's an R-rated show, like, oh, we're going to shoot people in the head, we're going to show blood, and we're going to do this and do that, and then they were, it seemed like they were wishy-washy on rated R-ness. So it's like, we're going to curse a little bit, and we're going to show some blood, but over here, we're not going to go too far. It's like, that doesn't make, you either all in or you're not. It was the purple stuff. It was like, oh, we'll (laughs) spray purple purple blood everywhere. We're not doing, no, 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 you can't do human blood, though. That's what I caught with that. uh, Oh, yeah. I caught it. Here's what I say Oh, yeah. I was just going to throw one, one thing out there, too, to uh, something CTS said earlier about the Avengers. Another thing I had thought about, too, with that was he there's another thing he may be lying about, too. I don't think the Avengers fuck with Fury no more. I think they he fell out with a majority of them a while back, because if you notice what it was when they were hiding at Clint's house um, at Hawkeye's house. Yeah. And he came up. A lot of them did not talk to him. They did. Mm-hmm. A lot of them did not really feel comfortable being around him. And so, like, yo, those were the earthbound ones. So you take the yeah. other ones that's away and far away and stuff like that. It seems like that at the blip, like, yo, you don't have the Avengers no more on your call because they don't mess with you. Bro, peep it th- peep this way. When 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 everybody came back, Fury didn't like everybody else went straight back to battle. Fury was like, all right, well, fuck, I'm gonna go to space. Like, bro, if you know shit's going down as Fury. Why are you not still even going to the battlefield to oversee? You don't got to fight, but like you really just said, all right, well, y'all niggas got it. I'm out. Like it was just weird energy. That and, was, and, I'm not fucking with energy. And don't forget at Tony Stark's funeral, where was Fury at? He was, he was in the back. Way in the back. And nobody, and, and you know, like, you know, he was like damn near the last person you saw. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Um, but what I was going to say also was, was just, you know, this is the con- consistent theme of this show, right? And it, it, like, Maria Hill's dying is the consistent theme. Like, this just don't feel like the stakes are that high, yeah. right? That's the that's the number one take from this show. The yeah. stakes were not that high. It was Facts. like it just you know what I'm saying. Like, I don't like low stakes, right? Yeah. If you're going to if you're going to have a show about espionage, you're going to have a show about see, like it's an invasion, a secret invasion where nobody you don't know who to trust. It was like. I knew immediately who I couldn't trust. He yeah. knew immediately who he couldn't trust. And that was the problem. Like, it did not feel like, 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 same, like, take uh, Rhodey's character, for instance, right? Now, Don Cheadle acted his ass off. That's right. Acted his ass yes. off, right? Yes. But it was like, I immediately knew he was a scroll. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. 
You know what I'm saying? It was yeah. The way yeah. he was talking to Nick, I was like, bro, yeah. why are you talking no, to him like that? The, the sass, <laughs> came, the sass came out a little too, too hard, and so, so much sass. Getting, yeah, so now yeah. we're getting into that main course, the meat and potatoes of it. So, yeah. and we can say two episode two through five is what we're covering, which is basically graphic uh, graphics plan of what he's trying to do. Yeah. Where Sam Jackson is to introduce the introduction of Sonya, and then of course now his wife. Like, like to Clint's point, the elements are there. Yeah, these aliens who we see who have infiltrated, and y'all are here. Then to find out there's millions of you here, it's like, okay, we're we're there. So it's like, you got yeah. something. You got something. Yeah. So what's that next step? And it's like. It it's like it. giving a kid a handgun, and then we saw Gravik, who's who showed us, "Yo, you here?" Start to, okay, what you doing next, bro? Yeah. Oh, uh, oh, uh, oh, uh, we got to blow something else up. We're gonna go take yeah. the console, and I'm gonna be general. Yeah, yeah okay. it just did not feel like like my thing is when you have an invasion of aliens. Essentially, you have an invasion of aliens. And it's just like the entire, and they're trying to infiltrate the government. And they're, they, as a matter of fact, not trying, they did infiltrate they did. the government. Like we're talking about, there's, I think, didn't they have the British prime minister? And, and, and like, like they infiltrate, like, first of all, let's, let's talk about this, right? You, 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 you infiltrated the government to the point where you have the British prime minister. Do you know how powerful the British prime minister is mm -hmm. in real life? Like, even though America, yes, we know we're a superpower. But England is a big, big, big conglomerate in the in the world. They are a they are a world power. Like it, it, it just I just think that they 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 play in our faces way too much. Well, here's it's the thing that you're missing. You're not missing, but here's the thing that's going with that point. Without other heroes, it doesn't yeah. make sense. And I'm and I'm saying that not to be a broken record, but it's like no, you're right. You're right. Nick you're Fury right. is not a hero. He's not traditionally just this hero that's about to save the day for everybody, right? right so right, right. you adding uh, Don Cheadle makes sense because you have somebody else who's an A-list actor to carry these scenes. However, when you start talking about scrolls are infiltrating all parts of government, these are people that you, you couldn't mean, have you believed mean. were scrolls. you don't yeah. have time to set up these secondary characters. What you're doing is you're introducing us to characters and showing us that some of them are scrolls yeah. instead of showing us the characters that we know and love and realizing, oh, this is a scroll. Now this makes sense because after that movie, yeah. I always thought something was weird. That's that's the payoff that they sold Marvel fans that they were going to get with Secret Invasion. It's yeah. like yeah. For the fact that we had the roadie moment, we should have had that moment five or six more times. Like, if you're gonna do that, you need to show us uh, who was the hero. You need to show us Scarlet, Scar Scarlet, <laughs> Scarlet. I'm talking about uh, Scarlet Johansson. You need no, to show you us know, that Black funny. Widow. I was going to. That is somebody who I thought could have been the hero that you're talking. Like, I mean, of course she's dead, of course, but you hit the nail on the head. Yeah. I it's like, go ahead. It's like, why wouldn't she be somebody that's screw? Because we all, this is what we've been saying since 2018. We say, yo, I hope Black Widow is a scroll. I heard they're going to do a scroll uh, yeah. show. I hope she's a scroll. And then that makes sense. So she could come back because Clint didn't know that. that so that volunteer, it made sense. Mm -hmm. That wasn't a scroll. Then they show, um, it was like just War Machine being a scroll, and then them not even clearing up. Hey, how long have you been here? And him not well, answering was like, the way they revealed it was ass. The way they revealed it was ass. Well, the only reason I said that, Will, and I know you said two through five, a lot of people are mad at the finale. And I want to say the finale. You can't look at that finale as a finale because one, it was the shortest episode of everything, which it meant was. that it was supposed to be a part of episode five. So realistically, there were only five episodes if okay. you look at it like that. Yeah. But so I, 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 okay. I was gonna say, even to that point, like going back for Rhodey, like there's a lot of too many plot holes before it even started. Ooh. Like you said, the build up, like one. You didn't even tell us what position of power he's in now. Yeah, how the fuck is the colonel just next to the president? <laughs> And then, right, and he, but, and he has the power to fire Nick Fury. Yeah, and then, and then to, but then even to to that point, it's like okay, 
I, if, if y'all want to give us that, we'll say, okay, he ranked up during Endgame when that happened and you and you were there in, in that moment like where Captain America came back and he swiped General Ross. We'll say, hey, that's when he got his power. We'll leave that there. Fine. What they harped on too much was when he came to fire Nick, it felt personal. Because it one, it's like, that. after mm-hmm. what you did to Maria Hill, we came to fire you. Let's be honest. Don't nobody give a fuck about Maria and Hill. And you didn't have and you didn't have a relationship with Maria Hill. Exactly. Right. If you if you really was going personal, you should have went Black Widow. Right. You should have yes. said, yeah. like, yo, because of what's happened with Black Widow, because of what's happened with Clint Barton and all the people he killed during Endgame from what just happened with them, yo, this was the straw that broke the camel's back for everyone. And you didn't you didn't give us that. It was like it became too personal to where it's like, oh yeah, this is a scroll. Like you ain't you're not even worried about government wise. Like you're giving this away to us already. Yeah. You've shown us looking at talk about Marvel, the only shows that mattered within the Marvel Cinematic Universe on Disney Plus were uh WandaVision and Falcon and Winter Soldier. And now Secret Invasion. Out of every show, they've shown us these three matter. Because yeah. the way that they did, uh, like one of the Captain Marvels, the way she's introduced, the black one, all right, cool, came from WandaVision. But Miss Marvel, the stakes weren't, there were no stakes. You just introduced this girl being this hero, which good for her, but I'm just saying as far as stakes for the universe. Yeah. None of these shows have had any ramifications except these three. And this just got added to the list. Yeah. yeah. So the, the one thing that, like, kind of exactly what CT was saying, um, how Marvel set it up for those who know the comics, they know how big Secret Invasion event was, right? So going into it, the one, the main question that I was wondering, I was like, is this show only going to impact Miss um, the Marvels, or is this is is this going to be true to Secret Invasion and impact the whole MCU? Because that's okay. what makes Secret Invasion so fucking dope in the comics. Once you got done with it and you realized like, oh shit, Emma Frost is a, was a scroll and, and, and you realize like the, the complexity of all the scrolls, like, okay, some scrolls just want to be a scroll, but they also just, they, they, they don't mind being their new self, like how Nick's wife was. Um, this yeah. hero I fell in love with was a scroll this whole time. And now yeah. I want to go back and read the comic. So like I went into this expecting that after this series ends, I'm going to go back and watch some shows on the MCU or movies and be like, oh, shit. So now that's what it makes sense. And I didn't was do it. It but did. My, yeah, but I here became, had my biggest question for that. What was the scrolls plan? Like y'all infiltrated and became all these people. What was the what? Well, for what? Like, yeah, it they was were, like it was there. like a you just doing it was, just to do it. Yeah, it was like a plan <laughs> was happening that y'all didn't tell us about. Like even when they were, they just wanted the secret. cosplay. Will you? Know, they just wanted the cosplay. Facts, because when you look at <laughs> Sam Jackson came up. I'm sorry, Graphic came up. Like yeah, uh, I need to meet with the world leaders, mm. and then they have like, it all these girls. It's like okay, but there should have been it? something in place before he even had the meeting, to where he didn't need to have the meeting. It could have been him there and be like, all right, report to me. And they're like, okay, Mr. Graphic. So this is what's going on. And I'm like, what? They're scrolls. But for him to go to the council to be appointed to be able to do what he did was ridiculous when they don't have a reason to just pretend to be these people, especially if Nick Fury didn't give them the go ahead and nobody knew about it anyway. Also, I'll follow up with a the MVP of this series is Nick Fury's wife. I'm not about That's to it. let this moment go and not celebrate that black woman. I loved her since Fresh Prince when she's playing one of the aunties. You understand me? And first, the good reveal about her, about Nick Fury being married and let alone being married to a scroll, amazing. Yeah. Number two, for her to also be a spy and for her to get tasked with killing Fury was like, that was one of the better parts of the show for me because I'm like, yo, what is she going to do and how is she going to do it? Can we also talk about the fact that what made her, like like the fact that she was so intricate in how she portrayed she was like I got she literally you know portrayed somebody she knew would be Nick Fury's type you know yeah. what I'm saying like she could have she could have became any other kind of woman she knew like this style of black woman mm-hmm. this kind of black woman 
this, you know what I'm saying? Like that shit to me is is her is backstory was fire because once she revealed why she chose that woman's skin, I was like, Ooh, beautiful. So yeah. it's like whatever writing they did for her, or I don't know how much of her own research that she added into it, but she was dynamic. If yeah. the entire show could have been thought out the way that they thought her character out and her uh, motivations would have been tremendous. Like I said, Sam Jackson never let me down. It's very hard for Sam Jackson to ever let me down oh, yeah. because I never, even in the show, I'm not blaming Sam Jackson. I'm blaming the writing. Oh yeah. But there, there was moments of amazing writing though with Sam, especially like that, that, that train scene between him and Talos and that conversation. Yeah. I feel like a all, million. The, all the, all the conversations like the like the moments where Nick and like Nick and Don Cheeto, all their conversations was like brother, yo, yo brother. like bro, brother, like, black like, man. Hey, hey I was like, hey, that's this only is, something that we can understand. By the yeah. way, this is the blackest yeah. I've seen. Yeah. Theory. I was like, that is ever Samuel L. J. Like, bro, he is black, black. <laughs> this is brother. Yeah. That's when he, he knew he was a scroll. When he was oh, in yeah. that damn hotel room, he was like, you know, just between us, brothers. And the dude didn't yeah. even catch it. I was like, oh, this is so like, great. You didn't even hit me, yeah. But but to both of y'all points with good writing, it's like Sam scenes to Deuce's point, and even too to like Priscilla scenes. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Fairs did this, which made the show itself decline because of how well they're writing us. So just take like what you said. This woman's a spy. Yep. Why? Mm -hmm. What again? What is the scroll's mission? Why did you put her here they never did it. to they kill never. Fury? What right. was that one about? Even to and then to another thing that CT said of initially, like with Maria's Hill or Maria Hill's mother, and trying to make that important. Us never seeing them. Y'all didn't establish the world leaders enough yet no. for us to show how important them being known as scrolls were. You know, wouldn't it would have been good for them to establish this? Back in Avengers 1, instead of aesthetically showing these people with shadows over their face, show their faces. Because we he talks to the council, I think, there, and I think he does it again in Avengers 2 right. and, Winter and Winter Soldier. So it's like you have the opportunity for these three films to show these people's faces. So at least by the time we see them in person, oh, hey, okay, great. Uh yeah. This yeah. makes sense. And then you show that they're scrolls. Then we're like, what? I remember yeah. them from this movie. That's like, if I can give you some characters that you would have been shocked by that would have been Avengers. Even though General Ross, the actor, uh, is, I think, William Hurt passed away. So you got now Harrison Ford getting introduced. All right, great. But let's say he hadn't passed. General Ross. Let's say uh, another separate character that we saw over these films. Um uh, oh, oh, Robert, oh uh, Redford's character. Redford's Robert character. Redford's character, who we know is still alive. You could also show the people. Remember the dudes in the elevator that Cap ended up fighting? Yeah. That were yeah, part yeah, of Hydra? Yeah. Yeah, show yeah. these guys and be like, mm -hmm. bam, show me crossbones. You can't give yeah. me all the Avengers. Give me some of the villains to offset this then and yeah. make them scrolls. We're like, what? There were, but they definitely, there, were, there, were, there were definitely no villains that we knew who were scrolls and that kind of that that does diminish it a little bit you need and familiar also, faces right and 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 it was just like the I just and then the last part for me also right that I, I really want to touch on is I don't like when I, as I'm watching you know episodes two through five so of course you know I'm sitting there saying to myself when are we going to get like like okay, normally during these shows you get a big, a deep, a nice ass, big ass fight, right? That yeah. fight scene, trash. With, that fight scene, not. I'm not talking about the end fight scene either. I'm talking about the fight that, when they bombed the president. Or yeah, the, yeah. It just felt. It didn't feel like a fight. It felt like just a straight. Just it was just. And maybe so, I'm wrong, but it felt no, like no, no. So, to, so, so here's my thing to that point. I think something changed in this show. I think some of this original or what they were going for, they took out. And so because of us being able to watch trailers, that that scene, Gaia was there. Uh, uh, the chick from Game of Thrones, her character was yeah. there because she's actually in the trailer. You see her over Talos's body when yeah, he dies. Cool. So right. there's some they they changed some stuff up in there that I think would have been better than the result that they gave us. Okay, I see what you. And you know what? Also, I'm going to cut. I'm going to cut Marvel some slack only for this. 
I know they were filming this during COVID or around the times of COVID. And like that mm. changed how the show was kind of shot, mm. stuff like that. And also, let's also talk about the fact that Marvel at the top of their, at the top of, of, of Marvel Studios, they're going through a lot of changes. Disney Plus yeah. is going through a lot of change. So like I'm cutting them some slack in that sense, but it's like, yo, this show just missed the- Hey Disney Clint, yeah. are, they, are they cutting you some slack with that subscription? <laughs> are you right? Are you right? Are you right? I'm not cutting no slack, bro. You're not giving me no discount. No, you're right. You're right. You're right. Nah, he, and and here's why I can't cut him no slack because right. even in the, the even in the point of shooting, this is where you had the chance to where you didn't need to worry about big CGI type of things. You didn't even really need to bring us a whole bunch of cameos. The problem was you didn't set up Earth. You no. didn't yeah. show us anyone's yeah. reactions. Like even the president, yeah. you didn't let the president mention anything about what's going on. Here's no. even prime example to make one of the because again, they say the Marvels is supposed to be the sequel to Secret Invasion. Mm -hmm. A very simple thing that could have happened is he could have been handing a folder that said top secret that shows something with the keyword mutant. And that was Ooh. it. Didn't have to harp on an entity, but we now know. No. Oh, yeah. okay. We know yeah. what the government is now concerned about during this time. They didn't give us anything that's going on on Earth. Are you ready? First of all, that was brilliant. Two, this would have been the perfect time. Well, not right now, but like it seems like what they're building toward would have been a perfect thing for them to do the rightful civil war. Oh, yes. yes. Now, yes. if you were so, if you introduce the X Men next. And then you introduce the Fantastic Four. Now we got a world where you can do the fucking Civil War and have all these heroes and all these villains and all these people. And you would make a billion dollars because you've told the story over years. Yep. But for you to not, you missed an opportunity showing a mutant file. You've also missed an opportunity to show all of these extra characters and see how the... the we got to get to the finale right now because I, I need to say this. Well, <laughs> go ahead, go ahead, man. Speak your mind. So when you look at when you look at the finale and the president makes the call and says, "Yes, war against all squirrels," it's like, huh? Wait a minute. This no, no. He said war against all anybody extraterrestrial. Any, anybody. Any, and this doesn't extraterrestrial. It didn't make sense because it's like, hey, man. First of all, you were just saved. Nothing came to you. You shouldn't be this angry right. about to, to try and call out a war against all aliens. This makes no sense. But that is where I'm saying would have set up perfectly for X-Men because we already know how the world feels about mutants, how they've told yeah. you to feel. Right. Yeah. So here's where I was like, and, and it, it takes me back to when we was asking, like, what was the scrolls uh, um, plan? So yeah. this is what I thought and what I, what the, how they should have did and would have played into exactly what you guys both said. They shouldn't have killed off Don Cheadle Scroll because with Armor Wars and even with the president, the president could have still got the reveal that mm -hmm. that Don Cheadle was a scroll. But when you go into Armor Wars and then we get the real Rhodey come out and that Rhodey having that and like I said, still with the top secret, having the mutants and everything. But now you introduce, oh, shit. Now we got to deal with this the scrolls idea the reason why they was infiltrating was they was trying to get all this tech and armor for the impending war so they can take over the planet which is what gravik said that he wanted he was like no we want this planet to me the resolve in this series happened way too fast and i didn't want it to be resolved i was like oh this is about to set up the marvels this is about to set up armor wars we may get introduced oh. to mutants and they because they they tried to wrap it up so fast that to me i was like yeah it, it didn't give me a um, it didn't give me hope, like, or direction. Hey, hey Will, can I just say one more thing in, in, to that, too? Yeah. To that point, it's because we're still talking about episode two through five, and in episode five, they introduced what was called the Harvest. Yeah. They should have introduced the Harvest, I think, two episodes before that, right? Because it was like, oh, we have the Harvest, blah, 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 blah. It's like, okay, give me the Harvest. But, like, if that, like, to be honest with you, I wish that would have been the mag knowing that plan from the beginning, you know what yeah. I'm saying? And knowing that that should have been, that was Gravity's plan from the beginning. Like he yeah. wants, what his real thing is, I'm now power obsessed and I, I want the harvest. And also, also you do all these flashbacks. Why can't we get a flashback of them collecting the harvest? Right. 
Right. right. Especially if you're saying you and the scrolls helped me collect it. Show right. me this. Can oh, we yeah. can we get a flash? Because like you have that footage of like so real quick, and I'm, I'm sorry, but like don't forget, you give us the flashback when we when it, when you do Loki, right? You give us the flashback when you do Hawkeye. You show like you know like you know the battle of 2012. Like so, why not show show that? And that's that's all. We'll go ahead. I'm oh sorry. yeah, but even even to, to your point, Clint, with that one showing us when Talos and them were helping you out during your yeah. other missions that help you yes. rise in the shield. Yes. Oh, um, yes. and then to Deuce's point. How you were just saying it, this was their also opportunity to go way bigger than just Armor Wars. What it could have been also to what you just said, them trying to get suits of armor, them getting the harvest, not to take over Earth, but to go fight the Kree. Yeah. To mm-hmm. go back at Super Scrolls to go right. fight them right. and take their planet over because yeah. of the fact. And then them, and then especially like now we're getting into like the season finale of them that talking about sense. These cre- these creep things, and that would have led so much better into us now going. Oh, okay, so now we see why the Marvels is the secret, the sequel to Secret Invasion, because y'all talking about them trying to get back at the Cree, y'all mm-hmm. showing us why Miss Marvel is important. And to the Harvest point, the missing piece, he should have already had the Harvest, and the missing piece was Carol Danvers' DNA. Yeah. Oh, yes, but yeah. also. Since when the fuck does a vial of multiple people's <laughs> DNA look like that? Yeah. Why is it clear? <laughs> it looks look like the most refreshing water ever. Bro. Yeah, this is apple like, juice. This ain't no motherfucking <laughs> DNA, nigga. That that that's Patron. That's what that was. <laughs> that was a shot of Patron <laughs> in his finest bottle. And then to go back to an earlier point that we made, he still didn't make right to Maria Hill's mom. They, no. There was no interaction. There was no, hey, I got the nigga. It was nothing. No. <laughs> Like, you he didn't just got back it. on that spaceship. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he trusted. Now, go to this, though. Super Scrolls. Super Scrolls. Now, explain this to me because I was confused. Is that supposed to happen where a Super Scroll has the powers of all the Avengers? Because right now, Gaia is the most powerful person on the planet. She well, the, original, wonder- the original scroll I knew had all the powers of the Fantastic, Fantastic Four. Four. Yeah. So that was the super scroll that we know. But there was like um, so technically the one that that um was Don Cheadle's scroll, mm-hmm. she's actually supposed to be a character in Marvel where she's the queen of the scrolls and mm-hmm. becomes a super scroll and start harvesting other powers. So I think what they tried to do was give us a mixture of that. To let us know, like, okay, yes, um, they and they can inhabit powers, but so out of the whole list, and then like in 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 the show, they show you the list of people they have. Haven't even all introduced of, all these people to us, by the way. Call right. Obsidian, they give you right, yeah, up yeah. Out of all of this fight, you have universal cosmic power. Y'all chose Drax. Yep. Groot. Yep. Quark. <laughs> mm-hmm. And Captain yeah. Marvel and Ghost. Yeah. Those were the powers I'm gonna use to fight the main villain of this show. Wow. Yep. And I'm gonna beat him in two minutes and thirty six seconds. They but use the Hulk DNA, as well. <laughs> the DNA you had, you had Spider Man that was available. You had there was a lot. Like I, I mean now. I understand why Wanda Maximoff and why Doctor Strange weren't because technically their powers aren't in their DNA. Like Doctor Strange's is, is stuff is, 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 is cosmic, but it's so, hold on, hold on. So, no, oh, so that, no, no, no. Right. That's Wanda that's hold on. That because that's the plot hole. Old boy from Avengers: Infinity Wars that had the mind stuff. Yeah, that's not supposed to be DNA. That's supposed to be from his brain. Yeah. So they but show it, that those can transfer over with scrolls. But it goes back to Clint's point. A lot of that could have been explained if they showed us them collecting the DNA. Because then you can should, give, yeah. then you can give some reason and why certain DNA you was chosen, it, maybe it, due to yeah, availability or whatever. I like agree. it just, they just didn't give us any real backstory to the harvest besides. Yeah, they didn't. Saying, they did oh not. yeah. Mm-hmm. So, <laughs> now, so I made. Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, no, I was gonna add. No, no, I was gonna uh, make sure to go back to you, Clint. That was what it was. No, I, my main, my main issue with the ending, outside of just it, just he just went to like he just kind of ascended to space, right? My main issue with the ending is Gaia is literally now the most powerful woman on the planet, and what's to stop her from doing whatever the fuck she wants? Who can stop her? Who, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, who and what can stop her is my question. I mean, so, but that's the question, too. Is she? Because Gravik was, too. And look what happened to Gravik. 
but she, but also he lost. I mean, he, well, yeah, but she, I, I, in my mind, it was like you, you, you kill a super scroll with a super scroll, but it's now like, how do you, how do you deal with, and, and where is the harvest now? Oh, they, they digested that shit. Yeah, that's that just gone. That's it. Yeah, it's <laughs> that was used. Yeah. So it's like, do, does, is this forever? Like she's going to be a super scroll period now? Well, in the comics, it's forever. So mm. if they if they follow the comics, then yeah. But you know, Marvel does take a lot of liberties. So is it always to... supposed to be a woman? Like, is it supposed to be a guy and a woman that's a super scroll, and then it just stays? Because well, I thought it, it was. It, it's different ones. Like yeah, gotcha. it's yeah, because it's like that one. Then there's one I think that like combined with like Ultron and stuff like that, and became like a Ultron scroll and stuff. Like it's a whole bunch of different ones and everything. There are certain stories that I, I understand. Marvel's like, oh, I want to tell this story because this is set up this. But if you're not able to give the story all that it deserves, Don't leave that it. shit in the comic books because yeah. doing it half ass like that is only going to turn people off. Like that turned me off of. Uh, I've always loved scrolls, but that turned me off from a bigger storyline because I'm like, this could have been so much better. It's like Civil War with yeah. Captain America. Civil War is an incredible story. I played it for the first time I learned it. I played it in um, Ultimate Alliance 2. And I was like, oh, my God, this is such a great story. You got mutants versus mm -hmm. Avengers versus Fantastic, like the entire universe. And then they do the Civil War. And all you do is introduce Black Panther and Spider-Man. And that battle was six people against six people. It's like, this is trash. So yeah. if you can't do a story, it's justice. Sometimes it's better to wait. Like now that they have all the rights back would have been a perfect time to do Civil War. Now that they got all the rights back, it's the perfect time to introduce the X-Men. But unfortunately, yeah. how yeah. are you going to introduce the X-Men in this world? Yeah. And another ball drop was this storyline should have been Fantastic Four. So Ooh. It should have been. It that's what the harvest yeah. should have been. Yeah, yeah. To, yeah. To introduce you to Super Scrolls. Matter of fact, the bro, it could have been as simple as the as um the, they are the ones protecting the damn harvest. You got to think about it. Like Nick, at this point, you already don't trust Shield. You already don't trust the government. So yeah. and you know Tony's out. So it's like, oh, the who else? If who else is, has enough technology and enough money, you go, you go, you go to Mr. Fantastic. He can like, oh yeah, I can protect it. And even if that, like you mean, he don't, we don't got to see their powers or anything. Just being introduced to him, like, oh, I got to get to the harvest. In in that in that episode five when he makes that call, like, yo, you ready? That should have been Mr. Fantastic on the other. Who did he call, by the way? They never tell you. They never tell you. They never say it. We assume, who gets, we, we assume it's Gaia, but we don't, you know, I've heard, but it's like, there's no, there's no facts in that. And this would have this been great to have one of the members of S.H.I.E.L.D. come in. I ain't gonna lie. I was like, yo, what where was S.H.I.E.L.D. from the movie? Who now, was S.H.I.E.L.D.? No, I'm well, saying. Shield, Shield's gone. Exactly. Yeah. Shield's gone. And, and no beyond way. that, when I look at the, when I look at the show, I'm like, all right. You told me that he was away on Saber, but you ain't showed me no Saber employees. You ain't showed <laughs> no correspondence. They just show up and drop him off whenever he calls in this yeah. big ass spaceship that he was on during um Far From Home. Yep. Right. And then and then too, it's like you're wanted. So why would Saber not know that? And why would Saber still let you up? That part. Yeah. None of that got cleared. So it's just like who yeah. Who runs Saber? It, who runs Saber? What are their missions and goals? What have you been doing up there except just hiding? Because they're making him seem like he's a coward, which makes it very hard for you to root for a main character, too. He, he definitely and, looks like a coward. And this, is, and this is one of the biggest things I would say even to like what this show proved was that if you're going to do DC shows, you need to do it with either B characters or C characters. Do not focus on them Focus on building the world after the ramifications. You've yet to show us the ramifications of Endgame. You barely yep. showed it to us in Captain America Winter Soldier. You barely showed it to us in WandaVision because it was isolated. Miss Marvel is isolated because it focuses on her family and her neighborhood. So yep. is Moon Knight. You've never given us a show that tells us what is going on in the world today. Okay, yeah, I, was yeah, say, I, I was I was I was going to give you Loki, but it doesn't it doesn't it doesn't show you what because it's off it, world. That mm -hmm. and and it hasn't really impacted like Kang hasn't impacted the MCU just yet. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because don't forget Ant Man, he's only impacted 
the quantum realm and in the TV, you know, but he has, yeah, you're right. You're right. Man. You know what? And to take it a step further, I mean, let's keep it a being. We all know the championship is always the Avengers. And I feel like it's been so long before somebody at least said, hey, we got to get the band back together. Like, it's like we haven't had that moment in anything since in game, like there's been so much shit that happened, and not like I don't care. It could have been M Man. Just, even just somebody was saying, "Yo, we got to get the band back together." Like, bro, there's nobody. First of all, I I agree in theory with you, but there's nobody that is. There are no stars left. The oh, only agree, person is yeah. Thor and Hulk are the only yeah. stars left of the Avengers. Yeah. Hawkeye, eh, right? But when you look at um Clint, you just said this. Uh, what did you just say? Uh, you talking about Kang or are you talking about um Oh yeah, Luke? Kang and the TVA. So yeah. so all these characters, Kang has only affected their, that realm, yes. And then you look at the TVA, it exists like within this time. I'm gonna go unpopular opinion. I don't wanna see uh the ramifications of the blip because unfortunately what Marvel did was they created a storyline and they said this is five years later, <laughs> right? And yeah. the next year we had a real life pandemic which they couldn't have predicted, but yeah, right. I us having a real life pandemic set us on a shelf for two and a half, three years. So by sitting us on the shelf, you've actually caught up to present day timeline of mm -hmm. what you did in Marvel. So now right. it's like, all right, let's just move on. But you can't tell us any stories that are within that. Cause it's like, ah, man, now you're reminding me of a bad time in life for a lot of people. But as little sprinkles you could give in to give us that hint and piecing together. Like, mm -hmm. I'll give another example. Spider-Man, uh, what was the last one? Far From Home? No Way Home. No Way Home. No Way Home. When Flash got accepted into uh, MIT. Yeah. He could have said, I got the Tony Stark scholarship. Ah. Those little things. Why have I not seen a Captain America statue? Mm. of himself why do i not see those memoriams of people who have passed why have we not been giving just again even going back to the secret invasion what is the government doing to handle this like even to the part of where the president declares war why wasn't there another screen where there's a backlash to that it's like well nah man yeah justice for, justice for these people yeah. i've seen that dude say what these why haven't they released Scott Lang's podcast? That's a way that they could have did it on a whole different medium where it's like he's just talking about what happened during that time and everything where then we don't have like like CT said because it it's it's a moment going back on it and because we're so far past it now it'll it'll have the black widow effect that they give us like a property with it. But if you give us that podcast that whatever Scott Lang was doing and how he got to his claim of fame now and just that's one of those moments like, oh, shit, a, let me listen to what he's talking about. And he's in character as Scott Lane talking about it. It's like, oh, OK, it's, it, it can be something simple as that where they can do it. It's just like they're they're you missing know, out on so many opportunities with there that could help out flesh out some little things. Like you said, just little sprinkles. It doesn't have to be a main focus, but utilize what we have at our at your helms to do so. I was like, clear this up. Randall Park's character from WandaVision mm -hmm. either give him a series, I wouldn't say a series first off, or that Marvel special presentation. Yeah. That way, we're not taking away from none of the characters you guys set up, like a Scott Lang or whatever it is you're playing for him. Give us him because he's a normal guy. We've seen him in multiple movies, just mm -hmm. like how CT has no said, way. and catch us up on what's going on right now and where we are. And Can you imagine if he was a scroll? If Randall Park <laughs> was a scroll, you'd be like, oh, man. Or the girl who hey, used to Darcy, be with the... Darcy. Darcy, it'd be like, oh, look at that. Yo, if Darcy was a scroll, Darcy, oh, Darcy was a scroll, you'd be like, this is this is good now. Because you're showing me all these characters. Yep. And, and it connects her right because there. she was right there at WandaVision. So it's like, yo, oh, she shit. saw some crazy shit. And she was with, and she was there with Thor. Um, Will, what you just said about Marvel's special presentation. I wonder why we why not give us a little bit, why not give us more of those? Right? Exactly. Like, and, and 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 that's a great idea, right? It's like you give us werewolf by night, right? Which I'm gonna be honest with you, I didn't give a fuck about it, right? And I didn't really give a fuck about the Guardians of the Galaxy Christmas special, right? But it did show it did tell us one major and what they did know was they told us one major point that we needed to know in that Christmas special. That 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 Peter Quill and and what's her name are brother Mantis. and sister. Mantis are brother and sister. 
My thing is you can give us maybe two special presentations of year a year that matter in the MCU. Yep. This could have been that. that. They could have. Yeah. This could have definitely been that. This could have been a fucking special presentation. Make that shit an hour and a half. And you'd be like, all right, bet. Let's move on. Because to be honest, the storytelling of those five instead of six episodes was could have been condensed because those episodes were like 30 minutes apiece. Yep. Yeah. 35 or 38. And it's like, all right, fam. And I feel like if again going back to it, like being anticipating the scrolls. Rody scroll reveal was so obvious, man. Nah. But like, 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 we knew going in. But even when it's like, like, even like they could have, even though we knew going in, like after the point seeing it, that that whole just wiping the screen, it's just like really, that's it. Like, like it, it wasn't a, it wasn't a oh shit moment. Like you know what I'm saying? And, you ready for this? Yeah. When you look at Don Cheeto become this scroll. This is why I don't watch trailers. If you looked at the trailer, you saw the cool shot of Don Cheetah walking down those uh those government stairs with his team yeah. behind him, and he's in yeah. this super uh this super tailored suit. And you like, oh, this is amazing. Where uh where is his leg braces? Because the only person who could have created something different is yeah. Zed. No, yeah. no, so so that that was what gave it away for me too, was yeah. that. That was yeah. the first thing because I was like, the only people who know that are dead. Yeah. Only yeah. only probably four people could have known his legs don't work. And he didn't have them since Infinity War. Yeah. And so yeah. I was like, as soon as they start talking about secret invasion, it's like, oh no, Rody might be a scroll. It's like, y'all gave it to us. So the problem too with it was y'all shouldn't have made him start acting different. Right. Or at like least not so fast. Like, not so was, like, he like was at, but he was acting obviously different. Like it wasn't yeah. even like it wasn't even subtly different. It was mm-hmm. like he it's like you can tell he ain't give a fuck about Nick Fury. Bro, yeah. I, it, was, I, it, it was I was on his side, and then I fell off immediately because remember when they first introduced him, he was protecting Nick, right? Remember he was talking cash shit to them. He was like, "Listen, if she keep on saying something, I'm a I'm a firebomb her, right?" You know, so I'm like, "Hell yeah, Rody!" But then the next scene. He talking cash into Nick Fury. I was like, wait, what is going on? I was like, he definitely a scroll. Like that was it was just like immediate. <laughs> and you see that, and you look at uh, because uh, I don't know if this is a rumor, but it makes sense for him to have been taken after Endgame. But I think the rumor was he was taken after Civil War. Yep. No, 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 no. The, the guy still had the. Um, it's official. Oh, one more time. It, it, it was during Civil War. No, yeah, so he got the, taken at Civil War. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right when he when from the from the facility because he still had the same uh when you see like that end where they put him into I, I don't know what that machine is, the cat scan machine, whatever, yeah. but he still had the gown on. So like when you look at the end of finale, when you see everybody else in like plain clothes, you see like it can Yeah, he's in a hospital gown. Yeah, when they were snatched. And so he was obviously snatched from the hospital at that point. So he was snatched from the hospital. Here's my question. Is he even paralyzed? Well, he was at that point. No, I'm talking about when they pull him out. We don't know. Because when they pull him out of the building, obviously he ain't got no energy, so they're carrying him. But I'm like, is he paralyzed? Because Oh, see, I thought I I, I took that they was carrying him because he was paralyzed. I didn't even think about the no energy. He's been gone for nine years. Yeah, he's been gone for the longest, so that makes oh shit. Also means he doesn't know Tony's dead. That means he doesn't know what's happened with the whole Thanos and all of that stuff. And it also makes sense for Don Cheadle's character to have been so comedic in Endgame, talking to Cap, like, hey, so uh, how come you didn't do this? Like, that's out of character for Rhodey, I always thought anyway. Mm-hmm. So I got that's a question. Shit. You I right. Got, I, got, I got another question with that, right? So if he's been gone nine years, and again, did he blip too? Right? He doesn't, like, the scroll Rhodey, if, he's in, if, if, if he was a scroll in Infinity War, that scroll didn't blip, but did the other Rhodey blip? No. No, I'm assuming no, just because remember it was half, so he could, like I said, th- granted, that's a high probability of when it's half of the the universe that mm-hmm. every like somebody, but he, like I said, it, it's not crazy that both 
scroll roadie and regular roadie didn't. I think work. they probably just lied. No, I think the two because they share a mental connection. So that would mean oh, if yeah? he right. was gone, then that that two he wouldn't have been able to be there. So okay. that well, wait, one what, I want to go back to what CT said because it really oh, so here's the thing, too. And this is where, like I said, they didn't stick the landing they should have because how CT said, like that roadie was so more comedic. And if you know roadie, the military guy, and the reason why it worked when it was um when it was main uh, Terrence Howard, um, because like I said, Rody was a military guy. You know what I'm saying? He was all right. And so we blended Don Cheeto's personality with Rody so much that we didn't Don Cheeto funny in real life. Right. Don, so Don we didn't funny. even really catch the subtleness that like, yo, that is not Rody. That is right. really. Yeah. So like, bro. Well, and if well, they would have stuck the landing on that, here, let me. If they would have stuck yeah. the landing on like the implications of Rody being a scroll and that Rody being gone for nine years, that would have been so impactful. And it would have had what I was initially wanted from the series of yo, I gotta go back and watch everything now because I need to see who else is a scroll, who else do I gotta watch out, who else is acting different from what their character inherently is. Was he funny in, in Age of Ultron? Because I mean, he did have the comedic scene of boom. You're looking and, for this, like, and th and that's what and that's what I'm getting to with it though. I I think it jumped too much mm -hmm. in Secret Invasion. Throughout the films, he gradually got to show more of Rhodey's personality yeah. because Rhodey is sarcastic. Rhodey's kind of an asshole, like he said. Like you, when it, it just just to Clint's perfect point, when he yeah. was like, "Boom, you dropped this." Yeah, that was Rhodey. So that it was, was like, Rhodey. yo. Rody is like that, and we got to remember how Tony Stark act, and that's and Rody's his best friend. It's like, yo, y'all gotta kind of have that same dynamic, and you saw it gradually going, and you saw the scroll kind of doing that, even with the whole like thing, the yeah. baby Thanos and stuff. I think on Secret Invasion, they made it start to become way too obvious, and I mm. think it was because of the fact of they made these scrolls share Gravik's pain. Mm. Yeah, I didn't like that this roadie scroll, who's clearly been doing this way before Gravic got this set up, starts to make it as personal as Gravic is making it. And I didn't like that that's what made his entire reveal start to plummet mm. down because it's like, yo, y'all made this emotional and it wasn't tactical no more like how y'all been showing this scroll doing it. But then you have to also look at when you look at Don Cheadle's character of Rhodey being a scroll, you got to ask yourself right back to the question that you had earlier, Will, what was the motivation of the scrolls? Mm -hmm. Like, what was their motivation before graphic even took over? Were they feeling these things? Was there some plot? This would have been a perfect bridge if graphic said, yo, forget the original plan. I have a new one. I and one. just that one sentence. I don't even need yes. to know what the original plan was. Tell me yep. this one and we're good. But for him yep. to just take over and they were just in these positions of power and nobody had any direction was ridiculous. But when you look at Rhodey and you look at him without his uh, his walking gear yep. and you look at all of the people around him, you're like, all right, man, this is why you needed more people to offset who yeah. was and wasn't a scroll. Yeah, because, because they, they got a mental connection. Does yeah. Rody remember? I mean, does Rody, if they have a mental connection, does he remember getting? Yep. Does he uh, has he seen everything that's happened since Ooh. they share a mental connection? Yeah, because did they, did they like when they're in that status and like when they get their body snatched? Did they ever explain like what like what the what the original body goes through? Nope. Yeah. Nope. See, and but, then like yeah. even with yeah. even with Scroll Rody, with again with another way they could have put a button on it where we could have seen it. Cause like I like I assume, and this again because they didn't give us any answer. I'm just assuming that scroll end up getting a little bit more cocky and believing in the plan. Like, oh, we got this in the bag. But they never established and showed that. Cause like I said, if they go like CT's route where he's like, yo, I got a plan. Then they show that scroll like, oh shit, I believe in this plan. Oh, we got this wrapped up. Then it will explain why he's now that sarcasm when he was blending in a little bit more, why he's no longer blending in more. Cause now he's like, oh, he think he got it in a bag. Or an easier way to do, or easier way to do it. A flashback where these two actually meet and talk. You know Never what? saw these two interact with each other. Yeah. Deuces, you gave the main problem of this show. Us as viewers have to assume way too much. Way too much. To way too much. Off, right? <laughs> like, if you take their... I mean, do we all agree that Loki's their best show or, or, or you know, or damn near their I best mean, show? If I'm comparing it to the rest, yes. Yes. It's, yes. It's, you know, but it's like with Loki, 
I didn't have to, like, there's a lot of, like, with Loki, they explained a lot of shit. Yeah. And they, a lot of shit connected. A lot of shit made sense. A lot, and from what I know, it's it's not true to the comments, but but they did a they did a good job of yeah. you know what I'm saying. And it's like when I left Loki, I left full, right? I left like okay, I want to see more of this. I want to see more of Kang. I want to see more like I'm I'm ready to see what the multiverse saga is about. No questions here. either, right? Yeah. Whereas with with this show, it's like there's so there's way too many unanswered questions. And honestly, if we're being honest, if, you know, if we're being honest, Marvel with all the shows that actually kind of sort of missed in a sense, even with the movies that missed, they leave a lot of meat on the fucking bone. And that's just, that's the, that's my number one takeaway from what I don't like about this show. There's way too much food left on that plate. On Loki, these are characters that you introduced to us and the standard viewer yeah. is like, what's this? Oh, that's what that is. And like you yeah. spoon feed us everything, but you also keep everything interesting up yeah. until the final moments of the finale. And that's why Loki was so good. Whereas yeah. the rest of the shows, you're like, yo, this is dragon or this isn't explained or only this scene is good or only that scene is good. Like Captain America and Winter Soldier, the only thing that was great about the show for me were the last 10 minutes. Yeah. I was like, oh, this is a great final yeah. 10 minutes. The first 10 minutes of the first episode and the final 10 minutes of the last episode of Captain yeah. America Winter Soldier. I was like, all right, this is great. But when you look at Loki, oh my God, there were moments every single episode where you're like, this is incredible. Bro, and they kept us, they kept us on the hook every and every go, no, no, I was going I was going oh, my bad. I'm sorry. I was gonna say one last thing, but what I was gonna say was was that. It was like me not being again. I'm coming from a perspective where I just watched the MCU. I never read the comics, right? Right. Like never even knowing or hearing of the TVA, they hooked me in. Never knowing who Ravona Renslayer is, like knowing that yo, know, the the whole bigger picture is that's Kang's love and blah blah. blah. Like a lot of stuff, just ne you know, just just again, like you said, CT, they, they you know spoon fed me, mm -hmm. and I'm like, okay, this shit makes sense. I'm sorry, go ahead. Yeah. Bruce. No, I was, I was going to say, and on top of that, kind of just kind of like with all these, like with the end of Loki, you was like, damn, yo, I can't wait to see Loki again. I can't wait to see Kang you know, when he pops up. At the end of this, like, I'm not, I'm not, I, I, I'm not really like, oh shit, I can't wait for Nick Fury to come back. I think the only thing that I'm really, I'm not even really like, yo, I can't wait to see this war. I think the only thing I, I really I, like, I'm yo, not excited for the Marvel. Yeah, I think the only thing I'm excited for, and it's like, it's more so like, yo, I just want to know what Rhodey's going to do once he realized that. Yeah. That, but that's that an armor war called. question. That's a yeah. question about <laughs> the armor wars movie, which we don't even know is going to happen. Getting, we don't even know if we're getting it. No, well, we're getting it. No, no, we're getting it. It's just a strike. We don't know when we're, we're going to get it, yeah, yeah. but. That's the only thing that I have looking forward to because it continues the story of one of my favorite characters. But beyond that, it's like this show, so many unanswered questions, as you said, so much meat on the bone. Go ahead. No, I was just one of the, and this is my last point. In Loki, they made me a character that I did not like, right? A character that was a villain, they made me like Loki. Yeah. And then with a character like Nick Fury, where I like Nick Fury, now I can't stand this nigga. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, I can't stand this nigga, right? Like, cause he's a he's a fucking liar. He's a fucking liar. I'm sorry, but that's it. That's all. No, but here's the thing. You're absolutely right. But they made us care about Loki because I remember I was like, why would I want to see a show about the, he? They've already given him the greatest storyline ever yeah, in the Marvel yeah. universe. Yeah. Why don't I need more? And then they showed me a reimagining of this character. And this is what I love most about Loki. They kept his character away from everything else. So it's kind of like he's just in his own pocket, whereas the rest of the world is going on and he's over here fighting a big battle, but he can't get the help of any. He's showing me I can't get the help of any other Avengers because this is going on and this will blow their mind. Me even existing where a right. secret invasion is like, oh, no, I just can't call the Avengers. I, I just can't. Yeah. Uh, all right. And, and, and all right. again, that's what, and that's when we go back to stakes, right? Like the fight, like if, like don't forget, Thor is running around. He's still mourning the loss of his brother, right? Like don't forget the reason why Thor was so upset in Avengers Endgame. He wanted to kill Thanos because don't forget that man killed his brother with his bare yeah. fucking yeah. hands. You know what I'm saying? And then for Loki, for for so let's say if Loki comes back and says, "Yo, Thor, I need your help," he's like, "Whoa, whoa, whoa wait, Loki, right? You're, right? You know what I'm saying, bro?" 
Bro, I was going to say, think about it this way. Loki is the only nigga right now that knows that the Infinity Stones are paperweights. Yeah. Everybody else still got the lore like, nigga, the Infinity Stones was crazy. That's the game yeah. changer. Loki like, bro, there's so much more. There's yeah. so much. I think, I think that's the biggest <laughs> issue was that with what Marvel's trying to do and they're not catching is that what they did with Loki was you gave us a great next chapter to a character like CT said that could yeah. have ended. Mm -hmm. You showed us how this character can evolve based off of not even that particular Loki because, again, he didn't go through all of that. So just like something CT said earlier in the thing when we were talking about wrestling, they made Loki the perfect show for anyone yeah. to come in and see. So it even again, to Clint's point of just being in the MCU, had you fell off and not watched everything, you could watch Loki and be like, okay, I can still be ready for this next phase. Y'all yeah. have told me who the big bad is. You've shown me how a character can evolve. And then to show it with the ones that we have seen, you never gave us a target for them to evolve. In WandaVision, you didn't show us why Wanda really was doing all of this. And like to Clint's point, the stake wasn't high enough. This bitch took over a whole town with mental powers because she lost her fucking dildo. Not high enough for me. Not <laughs> high enough for me at all. You didn't let her, you didn't, and where you were trying to get her to be was the crack <laughs> that makes her evil. Yo, CT face. Like, Yo. Wait a minute. I didn't know we were going here. I'm, I'm saying, though, like you did, you see, so when you get to um, the multiverse of madness, her madness isn't madness enough. It's midness because it's like, yo, I'm madness. mad now. Yeah, because it's like I don't, I don't have, I don't have my kids, and I'm going to get some kids. Why well, give a fuck about this white woman going to get her kids for this bitch? You destroy reality. Here's my problem. Everybody keeps talking about the hand in the ocean, but nobody's talking about where is white vision, bro. Bro, Vision flew off so long ago, and he after exists. he learned something too. Remember he, remember he said, "Oh shit," and learned something. Like, nigga, yeah. what, did you learn? what did you learn? If you're not gonna give me this, Kevin Feige, why hold on to it for the past three years? Uh, this is annoying. Up. Then clear it up, and even with these new characters, it's like I get you made them have these worlds, but just like to Clint's point. They should have been special presentations. Like, no disrespect to Ms. Marvel. Ms. Marvel should have been a special presentation. She-Hulk should have been one, too. A special presentation. Mm -hmm. Moon Knight should have not come out now. Mm. Moon yeah. Knight should have been in a different phase when you start getting into the darker magical realm. Yeah. And you can start piggyback off of that after you've given us a glimpse. Not saying, not showing them, but giving us that there's a Johnny Blaze here. Mm -hmm. That yeah. there is someone more in these dark realms to where now we see why Moon Knight moves into this. That's where you're introducing Blade. That's where you're introducing yeah. uh, Ghost Rider. That's when you introduce. That makes sense. But the thing that Marvel has been doing for the past four years is just throwing characters against the wall to see who sticks because they don't have a plan. The thing that I loved about the Avengers saga was that you had all of these phases that were building to Thanos. You told us. In 2000 and when did Avengers come out? 2011? 2012? You told us in 2012 Thanos is coming. So I know that all of these movies are to set up to Thanos. Yeah. After the Thanos saga ended, you showed me you had no more plan because all of this happening, I'm like, all right, who are you building towards? You've left us to believe. Are you building towards Galactus? Because if you are... And if they were building to Kane... You have you still have Avengers that have to deal with him. So right now you're showing me the only people that you're going to uh, deal with Kang are Ant Man and Loki because those are the only two people who've come across him so far. And mind you, the new Avengers movies that they have coming out, they're trying to make the new Captain America. They're trying to make Shuri and Shang -Chi, Shang Chi the Trinity, like they would have in DC, to be the head of the Avengers. Problem is nobody cares about any of the three. So do you think that the reason why we don't have the direction is that because Marvel tried to give us the new people and it didn't work or Marvel really still doesn't know who they want to back? I think they re I think here's the problem. Unfortunately, we don't have Chadwick Boseman. Unfortunately, 
Tony Stark is dead. Mm-hmm. Unfortunately, uh, Chris Evans left the MCU. Right. These are things that a company that is that has a billion dollars accumulated for these films couldn't have foreseen. So I think that they're like, all right, well, shit. Who do we have left that are some guns? All right, well, we about to do the Captain America story. Let's throw some Hulk in there so at least this can make... If this doesn't make Anthony Mackie a box office star, nothing will. will. That's number one. Number two, when you look at these characters, Shuri had an impossible job filling in the shoes of Chadwick, right? At this point, if they just moved the storyline further and was like, all right, T'Challa's grown up. He's ready to take the mantle. Bam. So I feel like now it's just slim pickings compared to them knowing what the story is because there would be no story where all three of these people could lead believably for a reason. Thor was so bad. We were like, all right, he could, he, he good. <laughs> yeah. and, so and, the issue, and the issue with it too is though is that you moved into a saga where you're not giving us a good pinpointed direction as far as what the next level was. So it's like, like you said, in Thanos, you gave us every introduction, which was from the Earth level to the yeah. God level to even letting us see some of the Celestial level. I think for this one, you keep trying to keep it on Earth when you had a chance to give us a set of Avengers where Earth wasn't the main focus. Yeah, yeah. And that could yeah. have been something. Because, again, going back to these special presentations, Nova could have been a special presentation. Dude yeah. lost his whole planet. And mm-hmm. we don't and he's the last of the Nova Corps. Yeah. Great setup to be able to go, okay, if we're getting another Thor movie, hey, we got another cosmic guy that can do something. We got another set of guardians of the galaxy that are about to start coming to really do their thing. You could have started giving us a bigger bad because I really feel like no disrespect to Kang. No, well no disrespect to John the Majors. Kang is a downgrade for Thanos. Mm-hmm. This is a well, down it, the way that they're setting it up, yes, because Kane has all the potential to really be as big and bigger than Thanos. It's just the way that they're doing it in the MCU I is agree. not making him as well, this thing. And, and that's what and, and, and you have an actor of Jonathan Majors caliber. Like, let's be real. Jonathan Majors, right now, I mean, outside of whatever's going on with him, which I think he's about to get cleared and would be fine, but he is, I think he's the best actor in Black Hollywood right now. Like, he is him. I mean, yeah, yeah, what, what, what has it has nothing to do with that? Like, to, to do I'm just saying, I'm saying, I'm saying, <laughs> wait a minute, wait a minute. I'm saying, in the eyes of the public, I'm not, I mean, we're in yeah. the business, it's different, we understand. Yeah. But Jonathan Majors is, he has range. Let's, let's speaking of which, this is why I like, this is why I like his acting style. He's the only black actor that isn't stealing from Denzel. I am Ooh. so tired. Of Ooh. seeing black actors Talk about it. steal Talk about from it. like here's the thing. Denzel Washington is one of the greatest of all time, if not yep. the greatest. Black However, or black or white, one of the greatest of all time. Yeah. I'm so tired of black actors only like I get it. Every artist steals from another artist as far as being influenced yep. by or you know, paying homage to them. But there are so many black actors that steal from Denzel. If I watch another show or movie <laughs> where another black actor is doing that lip quiver or they're doing that point like that, it's like, yeah. fam, are there not any other black actors you could be influenced by? <laughs> if you, they, they all do that hunch that Denzel yeah. does when he's walking and they're trying to be tough. It's like, bro, there are like 80 other black actors yeah. that you can steal from. Do you not think we know what Den- Save some Denzel <laughs> for Denzel is my point. But to CT's point, that's what he put right. <laughs> to CT's point, with to answer what 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 Col- uh, Clint was saying, bro. Like, yes, Jonathan Majors is up there, but as a villain, you still need a top notch hero to go against or to stop you. And right now, we don't have that in the MCU. And I really believe because, like I said, even if we're going, like I said, I said that the, the Avengers are the championship, right? The people that y'all trying to set up as the three pillars of the Avengers is not going to sell it. But you know who could sell it? We Let's get into X-Men and Fantastic Four because remember, there are members in there that are a part of actual canon Avengers that was slapping in the comics. So it's like, if y'all really want to get back to that essence of, okay, we need to have something to build up to and a team that we're building up to, stop 
stop prolonging the X Men and Fantastic Four reveal. But, but, no, but that's the re- but that's the point of why I brought all of this up to why I say Kane doesn't work because you need all of that. Yeah, for yeah. Kane to work. Yeah, you need Fantastic Four. You need X Men. You need Doctor Doom. Yeah, you haven't set all of that up enough for us. You know what you have set up though, Galactus. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you set up Galactus perfectly yeah. for us to have him be the big bad. Why? Because that introduces us to the Fantastic Four. That introduces us to Rise of the Silver Surfer. Yeah. That that introduces us to Doctor Doom, which gives us more reason as to why Kane will start coming. One, because we start seeing more of the technology in which he's pulling from. We start mm-hmm. to see the story that's starting to be around there. Because again. You could have seen, even to like Clint saying with uh, Loki, you could have shown Ramona Renslayer's character as a teacher during the MCU yeah. time as an Easter egg to hide in so we know Kang is coming. Who's yeah. he related to? He's the grandson of who? He's, he's Reed, Reed Richards. Reed Reed Richards. Reed, Reed, yeah. Okay, so that's why Fantastic Four is coming. Got it. But the X-Men will make way more money than any Avengers movie. Yes. Of course. And the fact that they're delaying it, knowing that they've been putting out bomb after bomb, is blowing my mind. Yeah, yeah. And then, because, bro, because here's the thing: even with like what, what Will said with the introduction of, like, bro, no matter what people say about um, uh, the Eternals, the one thing that they did amazingly was Celestials. show us the the Celestials, right? The size, the how, like how threatening that is. The just hey, the creation that just scared of the shit out of me, bro. Like, bro, I'm like at bro. the end of the movie where they got pulled up in the space. Yeah. I I'm not bullshitting you. I was watching <laughs> this shit on my computer, my computer screen, yeah. and that shit scared the fuck out of because I'm I'm somebody that's scared of large bodies of water, right? I was just about so, to say that. If I'm in a large body of water, like if you ever been on a boat and you looked at the horizon and you like, wow, we are in the middle of this massive undertaking. Yep. The Celestials pulled them into space, bro, into right. his the palm of his hand. That scared the fuck out of me because I felt like it was me being dragged up there. Yeah. I forgot what's the what's what is that term called when you scare the large bodies of water? Whatever it is. Yeah. I don't that know. But every time thing. I see that shit, I'll be water, oh, water terrified. Water. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's uh, agoraphobia. I think is uh, large spaces. I thought that I was think. small. I thought you were small. I thought that was small spaces. That's claustrophobia. Okay. What's the one yeah. with spiders? No, that's arachnophobia. Arachnophobia. <laughs> arachnophobia. Yeah. Oh, but, but like, like nonetheless, bounce, yeah, nonetheless, yeah. they set up. They set up the I, celestials, and so it was like, and again, going into Fantastic Four and everything like that. So yeah. I, I got to jump you guys. I apologize, man. But, yo, thank y'all for having me, of course. Uh, invite me to the fucking group chat, man, and stop playing with your boy. <laughs> and stop playing with your boy. Stop playing with your boy, man. I'm about this. I'm about to listen. Will to tell you, when we first met, I was not on I was not on none of this Marvel shit. I'm, I'm in that. I'm in he that. called me all the time being like, yo, did you see it? I'm did in that. Did you see it? <laughs> I'm in that. All right? So, uh, yeah, man. Thank y'all, man. Love y'all. And uh, I'll wrap soon. Yes, My sir. guy, Easy, bro. Safe out there, right, yep. yes, sir. So now it's not now the with with all the stuff that we've gotten, and it's a weird space with Marvel because it's like now the question is just like, bro, when are we gonna get back on track? That's I think that's where a lot of I don't even think it's superhero fatigue. People keep on saying superhero fatigue, movie fatigue. I don't think it's fatigue. Because you got to think the issues that we had with the DCEU was like, bro, when are we going to get on track? And Marvel was always on track for, they was on track for a good long time. Mm -hmm. And now both properties, Marvel and DC, so now it's just like, nigga, when are we going to get back on track? Let's get back on track. That's all we want. I, I I think what Marvel may have to do is something that they're kind of relying on with Deadpool. And if, and Mm. if this is what they're doing. It could be very smart for them. Mm-hmm. You need an anchor that's going to merge what what the elements you gave us. So, like to CT's point has been said, you cannot tell me mutants have been in our reality this yeah. entire time, right? But if there is an incursion that forces the mutants from eight three eight to now have to live on our planet, that's a different story. 
or if just being able to explain this new group of mutants that do come into our story, that's a different thing. Or to where our realities merge together. Yeah. So where you have 838 and then you have, what are we, 626 or whatever, 616? Yeah. Uh, imagine where we've had this battle to where both worlds merge and it's one Earth. So now we have their history. I wouldn't want that. That wouldn't be my first recommendation. But it's something that has to kind of be a major thing that happens for y'all to get these groups that we need, X-Men, Fantastic Four, Doctor Doom, you need to get them here now because, as CT said, the ones you've been throwing at us are bombing. And you're going to start being how DC was right now. You're going to get yourself a Flash fiasco <laughs> and an Aquaman 2 fiasco going on. And, and the only reason that Flash fiasco is, well, first, the only reason those films bombed, uh, Aquaman even came out, I know it's going to bomb. The only reason <laughs> those films bombed, number one, because of what the lead actor is going through publicly. Number two, because it was already announced that these films are not, mattering in the grand scheme of things anymore when you tell a general public that they're like oh well i don't need to go see it the only people who go to see these films like that are people who are fans of the character like the flash is in my top five so i'm mm -hmm. like i gotta see the movie no matter what also i've been wanting to see this film since 2008 i've been wanting to see this this movie be made since i saw dane cook host snl and he had a flash shirt logo on and i was like oh man I can see him playing like the Flash or something. This is back in 08, 09. Yeah. So fast forward, I was like, you know who would be a great Flash? Ryan Reynolds. And then they made him be Green Lantern. And I was like, ah, he's yeah. not going to be really a good <laughs> Green Lantern, but he'd be a great Flash. And then time went on and that movie bombed. And then he ended up being Deadpool. And I'm like, great. So I'm like, who could be the Flash? And then they decided it was going to be Ezra. And I said, all right, just make a good movie. And, you know, I still enjoyed it. But it was more of a love letter to Batman and Superman than it was the Flash. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, DC, I mean, uh, Marvel is in for a situation where you can only put out so many things that, a, that the crowd doesn't love before they stop believing in you. Yeah. 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 So, I so I would just say before we wrap up and everything like what what would be the next the next phase the next thing that they would need to do we know that we got a few we got uh loki coming out in october uh we got the marvels coming out in in november what's one thing like you could like you uh like deuces act so can get us back on track to give us just kind of that change just to go okay i see a little hope for the future uh, it's gotta be loki loki has to hit so hard yeah okay. that here's what happens with a hit when you get a hit, it don't matter how long it's been without a hit. When you get a hit, people mm -hmm. start to say you back, right? Yeah. So as long as that noise about the hit is so good, the next thing you drop could be, eh, they're still relying off the hit. I say that because you said an October release of Loki and then the November release of the Marvels. So if Loki hits, it doesn't matter what the Marvels does because yeah. we'll be like, all right, we good, we good, we got Loki. Yeah, yeah, and I, I, I just at least want Loki being able to at least contact or or inform somebody else about the shit that he's on. I think for me, I just need that hope of all right, we gotta rally the troops. Cause I'm like, yo, I've been missing that since the since the uh, end game. So it was like ever since then, it's just been solo, 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 solo. And you like to get hit, miss, hit, miss. But like, let's get back on track to we need to work up towards something. And I don't want everybody just working towards their individual thing. Let's get back to working towards one individual thing that we need to conquer. So that's what I need. I think at some point Loki is going to come across at least Ant-Man because those are the only two who have yeah, come across Kang great. so far. And Carol Danvers, uh, Secret Invasion should have come out right after Endgame. I'm yeah. talking about right after. That should have been the first mm -hmm. project because yeah. you just yeah. showed... You showed Captain Marvel, and then Endgame came out. And then if you'd have shown Secret Invasion, we'd have still been like right there with it. Be like, oh! But for so much time to have passed, and this is where I talk about it not being directly after Captain Marvel. Because if it had been directly after Captain Marvel, it would have been too perfect. Because you introduced the Kree, now you're introducing the Scrolls, But with a little movie in between them, now we can get back on track and you can start including Skrulls uh, within the universe completely. 
Yeah, I would yeah. love to see Kevin Feige's whole storyboard storyline of movies and properties and seeing like what story are you trying to tell with this time? Because I think that that's also, I mean, you guys are writers, so obviously that's something that you guys look at more. And it's probably like, yeah, what what is this like? What is the story that you're telling? Because right now the timeline is all over the place. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. I, I want to see what is Kevin Feige's vision and is it is because if it's going the way that he expe expected, then I just want to hear him say why did why did you choose these liberties and th this release schedule? But I yeah yeah I would yeah <laughs> yeah man we are, we are yeah I, I I'm still to kind of uh to y'all point I think Loki is the one that's gonna like really drip dribble this and take it home to like try to get get them back into the game and stuff yeah. like that. Just I don't I don't see it with anything else. I think it'll be funny though if. Loki's show and and the Marvels are tied into one another. Yeah, perhaps maybe some kind of stuff like that. And then I just also would just think it'd be funny to see um, Loki uh, actually have to interact with his uh, real life wife in the movie too, as well, because she's the main villain in the Marvels. I just think that'd just be hilarious to see since they'll drop around the same time. Yeah. He's still coming out with Loki too. But I think also too, like to CT's point. And mine sticking into that cosmic and universal side, yeah. Ant Man and Miss Marvel. So one of those needs to show up and interact with either Loki or Kang. And I'm still going on pitting on the fact of Ant Man didn't go home. I'm still wanting to roll that. That's a good theory. I yeah. love this is random. I love that we're getting a Spider Man four. Yeah. Uh, with Tom Holland. It's got to be the Venom one. I mean, that's there's nothing else it could be after seeing Spider-Man 3 because now he's street level after yeah. being intergalactic level. And I'm very excited to see that character. I also would love to see... This is a Sony thing, but I would love to see the Miles Morales movie end with him jumping into a universe that's live action and we don't even have to do the origin story of Miles Morales. We just start from him being real life. Yeah. But yeah. beyond that, do you realize how many people we're in a very small group because there are so many millions of people that don't know the difference between the Sony universe of Marvel and Marvel universe of Marvel. Yeah. Yeah, people like, yeah I saw that movie. That's Marvel, right? No. But it's a Marvel <laughs> character. <sighs> Uh, it's not the same. Uh, not the same. Not the same. Yeah. <laughs> it's sa same, same, but different. But different, bro. But different. And they don't get it. No, nah, they don't, man. But hey, that's why this show is here to help people that you know don't get it to get a little bit of more information, whether it be Marvel or whether it be DC or any other thing from television shows, animes, whatever we decide we talk talking about. It's our perception for our culture, and we're glad that y'all can tune in. I want to thank my guests for being on here today, Young Deuces, CT is Fury, and uh, Clint Coley out there before we got here. As always, I like to make sure that y'all know where to go follow the fellas, man. We're going to start off with Deuces, CT, and then we're going to go ahead and close this thing out. Deuces, you up. Yo, yo, yo. So we just dropped the official teaser trailer for the Black Geek documentary. We premiered it at DreamCon, and it's, it was like, bro, DreamCon was an amazing time. It was just one of those things to see black love, see just all the black cosplay. People was premiering stuff. It was really one of those moments. And to see, bro, they grew last year. They had 6,000 people. This year, they grew to over 20,000 people. That is an amazing, amazing growth. So shout out to RTC World. But go to YouTube.com backslash Geekset Podcast. Check out the official teaser trailer. Uh, we are on the last leg. Now we just got to get all of our big, big, big interviews. So, you know, like I said, we're... We put that out to kind of gauge the interest and get people, and we've been getting amazing feedback. So check it out and follow me everywhere, young underscore deuces. Dope. Uh, CT is dope on everything. Thanks for having me, man. This is such a good time. You know what? Yeah. I will say this. I just dropped episode one of my new podcast called Flower Sessions, where I'm giving flowers to people who've made an impact in my life in Ooh. some form or fashion. And, um, Faction, fashion, sorry, uh, some form of fashion, and a lot of times it's gonna be uh, famous friends, a lot of times it's gonna be people that you have no idea about, but all of them matter the exact same. So, you can check that out on my Patreon. CT is dope, but well, before you end, let me let me big up CT real quick and why this show probably makes the most sense for, for CT. 
as long as I've been a fan of CT, because for those who don't know, I was a fan of CT far before I started doing content with him. Um, the one thing that I always praised about him and just being a fan of him was how he interacts with his peers. Every time, every show, anything that I've seen him on, there was always a moment before the show gets in or anything, or even at the end or a moment that CT has a moment to praise his peers, but in a genuine sense. It didn't seem any, like, it didn't seem non-genuine. So nah, it's, all, it's always so something like, hold on, because I, I got I to stop and I, yeah. I got to do some slides for a second. Yeah. <laughs> every and, time, and it's always time. like that. Yeah, so you this know, bro, perfect sense. And I, you, I, 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 I didn't know you was doing this show. I'm definitely gonna check out because again, even though you my nigga, I'm still a fan. I still watch all your stuff, bro. So I'm definitely checking that out. So make sure you know. I'm not gonna tear up, dude. But I appreciate <laughs> that. It's uh, I'll say this, and this is not even on a somber note. I always make it my business to tell people how much I care about them, how much I love them, and thank them because we as as men, we as people. In this business and in life, we always think like, oh, I'll just tell them tomorrow or I'll talk to them another time or this ain't the place to do it. And then you look up and that person is dead or that person is, you know, whatever. And I remember when David Arnold passed away. Shout out to David Arnold, man. Rest in peace. David Arnold passed away. But before he passed away, I had literally went live with him. I had given him his flowers in person. I told him how brilliant he was. I thanked him for everything he encouraged me to do and be. And I told him uh, he was the only comedian that every time I watched him, I was like, fuck, I should have thought of that. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> because he was just so brilliant. And I got a chance to tell him that and tell him, hey, man, I love you and all of these things. And I, I do that with everybody. So by the time he passed, yes, it definitely sucked and it, it hurt but it didn't hurt as much as it would have hurt if I didn't tell him how I felt about him to him. So thank you deuces for that. And, uh, I'm gonna make sure I don't step on no cracks and, uh, <laughs> get no black hands in front of me. Nigga. So thank you for giving yeah. me the flow. No doubt. No doubt. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed, man. Make sure y'all check out the, the documentary coming out, CT shows coming out Two well fitting pieces of content that fit both of these people very well, getting the information out about something that Deuces is very, very adamant about and something that CT has just really made a part of himself. Like you yeah. said, it's a very natural thing because you'll always hear him giving this flowers. So it's it's a perfect thing for you to have a yeah. show where it's dedicated to that. And just like Deuce, I'm going to be checking it out too. So um, thank y'all for joining. Make sure that y'all uh, write in the comments below how y'all felt about Secret Invasion. And, you know, don't be shy, but also know YouTube will bleep out stuff if you start cussing <laughs> and dropping bad words. So just know that. But let us You know can't even cuss people out. out, bro. You're In your comments, if you cuss people out, like early on in YouTube, people were trying to be reckless. And I would be like, oh, motherfucker. And I'm like, nah, because YouTube going to do something to me if this person reported, never mind. And you just delete or block the person. So these social media apps have gotten really good at getting rid of you if somebody disrespects you so it's like ah oh, mm -hmm. man mm -hmm. you gotta, gotta start you gotta start writing like how they uh did in the uh what it was them orbit commercials <laughs> you, <laughs> lit liquor. Liquor. you gotta start calling people that <laughs> <laughs> you son of a biscuit drinking trout I'm like, Yo. <laughs> but thank y'all everyone for checking it out man and we'll catch y'all next time peace